Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about El Ruderai yogurt. And is your El Ruderai yogurt separating into like whey and curds? That's a, a really big topic, something people don't really understand what's happening. And I want to explain it all to you because... Um, this is such a great yogurt. It's one of my biggest products. Uh, people are getting so many benefits from El Ruderai that I want to help you understand what's happening and how to remedy some things and just make it better so you can really enjoy your yogurt. I've always said that El Ruderai, this, this Lactobacillus El Ruderai, has a mind of its own. It's a very strong species. Um, they even use it to clean out the fermentation vats that have a, other undesirable bacteria in it. They, they clean it out because El Ruderai is so strong, it will just go after it and clean out the vats. And so remember that this species can do that inside of you too. It's why it's so effective for things like SIBO and um, it helps to restore uh, gastrointestinal health because that's where it resides. And it's very strong. And many yogurt manufacturers have told, uh, told people that they couldn't make El Ruderai yogurt. Um, but Dr. Davis figured out how to do that. He was the one that figured out how to make this yogurt and um, to make it pretty powerful too. And so it's really technically not a yogurt, okay? Um, it's a fermented dairy product or non-dairy product. It's really not a yogurt. That's why it doesn't behave like a yogurt. So, but we have a lot of ways to help you because it does make a very, very good yogurt. I literally just had some about a half hour ago. I love it. Um, but sometimes... When it's first getting activated, El Ruderai is so strong that it acts up and starts separating the yogurt into curds and whey. And it can smell very, very strong on the first batch, but this is the activation batch. So after working with this yogurt for a couple of years now, I know much more about it, so I, I wanted to try to help you with it. So the very first batch, and if you're using our yogurt, and this can also happen if you're not using our, you're just using the tablets, but if you're using our yogurt, the El Ruderai Superfood Starter, um, it can separate into whey and curds on the very first batch when you're using the sachet. And this is because the bacteria is not fully awake yet. It's not as stable as it will be once you make it into yogurt. And then you can use that yogurt as a, another batch for the next batch and the next batch and the next batch. Um, but the first one can separate. It doesn't always do this, but it can. Um, and it can smell very, very strong, kind of like cheesy, yeasty taste. Um, but once you use this yogurt that you made, even if it's separated away in curds to make another one, it will make a much better yogurt. Um, it can, you know, taste strong and smell strong, but it will calm it down on the next batch. It's just because it just got activated. So it's like, you know, got all this food to eat. It's going like growing like crazy. And cause we have very, very high CFU colony forming units of bacteria in this yogurt of El Ruderai. It's huge, massive amounts. So when it gets activated, it kind of goes berserk a little bit. So when you use your yogurt, okay, so let's say you made a batch and you use the package or the tablets or whatever you're doing. When you first do it and it separates, sometimes it doesn't, but if it does and it looks bad and you don't really want to eat it, use it to make the next batch and the next batch. And then you can use the yogurt that you made to do another one um, I also have a recipes for stuff you can do if you don't want to consume it when it separates. I have other things you can make with it. Um, but you're going to make that first batch and then you're going to use your next batch. You're going to use two tablespoons of this yogurt. You can try to use the whey and the curds or whatever. Just get a couple spoonfuls of it. Put it in another jar. Add in the milk. Add in the prebio or the inulin, whatever you're using to feed it. Because you've got to use something to feed it or it won't give you very high CFU counts. And then that batch will calm down, taste great, wonderful, um, and it will be a really good yogurt. Now, when you're using this yogurt for the mesh batch, if it doesn't look great and it still separates and it's very sour, then you need to use less prebio or inulin because it's super strong. So cut the prebio down to one tablespoon and um, then it won't have it won't be as active. That's the secret. Now, you want the prebiotic because you want to feed it because it ferments for 36 hours. But just use less and it will calm it down. And here's the thing. Do not be tempted to shorten the fermenting time. 
People do this all the time. And there's some websites that say only for a minute for such and such an hour. You don't get any El Ruta ride till you hit the 30 hour mark. That's why you ferment it for so long and why manufacturers said you couldn't make yogurt. They didn't ferment it long enough and they didn't ferment it at the right temperature because it, it likes body temperature, it likes 100 degrees. So if, if don't be tempted to do it, if, even if it separates, let it keep going. Um, I mean, I've even had it come out of the jar a couple times where it just got so active, but I kept letting it go because it puffed up um, because then I used that batch for the next one. You want to let it go to 36 hours because at 30, at hour 30, you're going to start, it's going to start making El Ruri strains and a, a lot of them. But up until the 30 hour, it doesn't do much. So you're not getting anything if you don't do it for 36 hours. You're barely getting any El Ruderi. So that's a really important thing that people don't realize. Now, uh, and the other reason we use the two tablespoons of prebio or you can use inulin is because you need that food to feed it for that 36 hours. So some places are saying don't use as much prebiotic on the first batch, but then you're not going to get the high CFU counts. So you can reduce it if it's super sour and super active on the next one, but don't reduce it on the first one. Keep those two tablespoons of inulin in there so you'll get the high CFU counts because you want that. Um, otherwise, you're not getting the benefits. So um, if it does separate on your second batch, which usually it doesn't, just use less pre prebiotic and you'll know because it'll be super sour. If it's getting super sour tasting, it probably needs less food because there's a lot of bacteria in there that's proliferating and just making an overabundance of El Ruderi, which is really good. It's just super strong. So um, the secret if it's over sour or separating on the second batches is to use one tablespoon of prebiotic, and that will help calm it down. So uh, my favorite thing to do if it's overly separated and I don't necessarily want to eat it because it just curds in whey. You can put it in a smoothie. I do that all the time. It tastes great. I put fruit in there, some collagen powder or protein powder, whatever. Um, I even put it, mix it with kefir and make it into a, a smoothie, and it's great. You can't, it tastes great. The other thing that I love to do with it is El Ruderai cottage cheese. So you take like a cup and a half of El Ruderai, and the, you have to follow my recipe, but it will make the best cottage cheese that will have lots and lots of El Ruderai in it. And it's a, you can do so much with cottage cheese, but uh, homemade cottage cheese is the best. I love it. So it's really good. Um, one of the things I want to tell you at this time of year, you, what you do is you put El Ruderai, you heat milk up to a certain temperature. I think it's 80 or I think it's 80 degrees. I can't remember for sure. It's on my recipe. Then you add in a cup and a half like a El Ruderai. And you can do this with kefir. You can do this with anything. And then you kind of mix it. You take it, take it off the heat. It shouldn't be very warm. And then you let it sit overnight and it'll form a curd. Now, if it doesn't form a curd, it's because your house is super cold. So just let it keep sitting or try to find a more warm place. And it will form a curd. And then you strain it and you've got cottage cheese. You, you kind of strain it through a muslin or a butter muslin or a cheesecloth. And you get this beautiful cottage cheese that I love. I love it to do all kinds of things with the cottage cheese. It tastes really, really good. So, um... Non-dairy El Ruderai can also separate, um, not necessarily because it's super strong. I mean, that's part of it, but because it's made with nut milks, which are mostly water. So you're not going to get the super thick yogurt um, that you would get with dairy because it's got a lot, nut milks have a lot of water in it. So that's why we add gargum to it, which is a prebiotic made from beans, by the way, um, it's it's not bad for you. It's just a prebiotic that will feed it and thicken it. Um, and if the first activation back on the batch on the non-dairy, and this happens on non-dairy quite a, quite a bit, gets a little bit of pink on top. It's just kind of the yeast on top. Just scrape that off underneath is fine. It's harmless. It's not going to hurt anything. It just doesn't taste that great. But it's not actually it doesn't really taste too different. But you can scrape it off and underneath it will be fine. And that's really mostly only with like coconut milk. It tends to react to the wild yeast in the air and that's what it is. It's harmless, but it's from air exposure. Um, and, but it really, the underneath is really a, a good yogurt. And then the next batches get better and better and you usually don't see that when you use that yogurt as a start. It's usually just the activation back batch. So we have a lot of non-dairy recipes too. We have a, my favorite one of the non-dairy El Ruderais is the oat milk one. But you have to make like homemade oat milk. Store-bought ones do not work very well. I've tried almond milk 
and I tried it with the homemade almond milk and it just, it's just not very appetizing, super watery. It's just because the nature of almond milk. Sometimes it'll be okay, but most of the time it doesn't, so I don't recommend it. I remember coconut or oat milk, um, but you need to make your own oat milk and I'll show you how. You're basically making your own oat milk. It kind of is a more lumpy yogurt, but it's really, really delicious. I really like that oat milk, right? um, oat, oat milk yogurt. It's really good, but follow my recipe. Don't buy this stuff from the store to make it with because it will not taste very good at all. So, and those are, we have a lot of recipes um, for everything for El Ruderite because I make it so much. Um, I literally, and I also just made four jars just now because uh, I'm down to one jar. And you can, those jars have been, the jars that I use to make the yogurt have been about, they're about three weeks old and they still make great El Ruderite. As long as you don't see anything on top, like it's black or green or fuzzy stuff, then it's fine to use to make another batch. I would say three to four weeks is the max that you should wait to let it go to make another batch because um, it might get overly sour if you wait and use a, a lot older batch. But I do use it all the time after it's been in the fridge for three or four weeks. So it works really good. Now, um, something I want to tell you, and people just don't realize this, and there's um, a woman at Cutting Edge Cultures who helps to make our products and everything. She's great. Her name is Dee Dee, and she had wrote something really well that really helped me. She's She's a very good writer. She's also very scientific. And one of the things that she wrote is science, uh, separation is not failure. And people need to know that. It's really important to know that separation is not a sign of failure. A half cup of dairy al ruderized superfood made with our cutting edge culture contains over 67.2 billion live bacteria. And we have research too. You can I can send you to the research on our page. That's far more than any al ruderized supplement currently on the market anywhere. And for comparison, the highest supplement count only has 5 billion per capsule, and we have 67. Um, and it's so it's so much more readily absorbed by the body. Um, and because it's in a form of yogurt, it's so much better for you. So it's uh, it's also typically higher than any store-bought or homemade yogurt of other strains, which are typically only cultured for 48 hours, undergoing one or two multiplication cycles, whereas El Ruderite undergoes 12. So what that means is because it's fermented so long, it keeps making more and more and more. So it's that's why you get such high counts with it. Commercial yogurts uh, also tend to separate during production. They look smooth and uniform when you open the tub, but that's because they've added a stabilizer additive. And we don't add stabilizers to the El Ruderite culture. So whether it's separated or not, your fermented superfood contains El Ruderite, both the curds, the solids, and in the whey. The whey is good to drink and is healthy. It has a lot of protein, calcium, vitamin D, and high levels of B vitamins. Despite the similarity of the yogurt El Ruderite, it really isn't a yogurt. It's a fermented dairy. So again, we don't expect El Ruderite to behave like a yogurt when in fact it's not. It can take different forms. Sometimes it's thicker, sometimes it's thinner, and it really depends on the milk you use and how your fermentation process goes because it has a mind of its own. But we have so many people making this and having so much success. I mean, I specifically eat it for specific things because it helps me sleep, it makes me feel better, it also makes me not hungry. It's very nourishing, it's very nutrient dense, and it's fast and easy. Like, okay, so I just made four jars, I took Two tablespoons of a previ the, the previous El Ruderai yogurt, stuck them in those four jars, two each, two each, and then two tablespoons pre of prebio, added a little milk, stirred it with a spoon. I don't even whisk it. I just stir it with a spoon and get all, all the clumps out of the side. I don't even declump at all. It's still a little bit clumpy. And then I just pour milk in, stick it in my uh, yogurt maker. I, I have a sous vide because I like to make, the sous vide make, allows me to make a lot of jars all at once. So I really like it. We just stuck it all in there um, and it's going now, so it'll be 36 hours from now, but it doesn't take that much time. The milk is cold from the fridge. I don't have to heat it up. I use ultra pasteurized milk. Ultra pasteurized milk is really important too. For A lot of people get separation because they don't use ultra pasteurized milk. Um, if it is ultra pasteurized, you don't need to heat it because it's already been through that process. Um, but ultra pasteurized milk is important to keep the separation because it helps to denature the lactoglobulins in milk 
which allows it to form a thick curd. So ultra-pasteurized works the best for yogurts. Now, ultra-pasteurized does not work for kefir, so don't use it on kefir because it doesn't like it. Some of it will, but a lot of people have a lot of problem, problems with kefir. Kefir is made to be fermented on the counter. It doesn't like the artificial heat or super warm things, so that's different. I know it gets confusing, but yogurts do need ultra-pasteurized milk, all of them. They work better and do better. So I hope that will help you. I have lots of recipes. Um, I've got FAQs. I've got all different kinds of things to help you. Um, and I'm going to put all this in the, you can read the article for this if you want to go back and look at it and find the links and the recipes and things like that. So I'll be in one place for you. So we have FAQs and we have this. And I hope that helps you. I hope it helps you to make over because it's so worth the effort. It's an amazing yogurt that's probably my favorite of all. So anyway, have a great day and we will see you next week.